<laughs> Good morning. There are 94 days until Christmas 2020. And over the weekend and the uh, last part of last week, The Mandalorian won a, co a combined total of seven Emmys. And uh, back in July, when uh, The Mandalorian was nominated for so many Emmys, we went through all 15 of them and we sort of made predictions. What we thought might uh, be possible and what we thought was very unlikely. And uh, I wanted to go back today and just uh, as a point of honesty and to make sure that uh, we we see exactly how well we did on those predictions. It, it, plus it'd be fun to take a better, uh, deeper dive into uh, those Emmy awards and what it won. So uh, just to be upfront, I'm not a huge fan of the award shows, but uh, I am a huge fan of Star Wars and uh, very excited that uh, The Mandalorian has done so well. It's not only good for the Star Wars community within the community itself, it's good for Star Wars as far as uh, drawing more attention to the franchise and to this fantastic series. So hopefully we'll bring uh, more people into the fandom and to begin to build uh, the fandom and rather than split and divide. So uh, The Mandalorian has been fantastic for us and uh, we're happy that uh, it won as many awards as it did. So uh, off the top, good morning Reefer Man Reviews. We've been chatting a little bit before the stream started. We're taking the kiddo back to school today. Oh, oh, oh boy, that's exciting. And uh, to actually go back into a school. You know, <clears throat> there are signs here and there that maybe, just maybe, we might be uh, figuring out this uh, this this pandemic and that we might find a way out of it on the other side. Uh, we still have everybody here at home uh, in the uh, North Pole. Everybody's working from home and uh, taking classes from home and uh, there's very little back to the normal. But uh, yesterday we went out to uh, the old Walmart and uh, they removed the, the, the one-way aisle uh, uh, markers and uh, the barriers at the doors. So you can go in but, uh, the doors and you didn't have to go around and uh, all this big screening deal. Uh, in, and uh, you were able to travel within the store uh, any direction in those aisles you wanted. So, oh, good morning, Dale. Welcome. Glad, glad to have you here. So, let's jump into it. Let's take a look at the uh, Mandalorian. Let's look at those Emmy nominations. So, I thought we'd go back to, uh, and, and if you missed the uh, original uh, stream when we did the, the, the uh, Emmy nomination reviews, Oh, that's a painful stream. Uh, afterwards, I'll put a card into the uh, the stream where you can go find it. So if you're watching this on the replay, you can go watch it. Uh, it's a terrible stream. Um, we had all kinds of issues that day, and uh, not not the best work. <laughs> uh, Santa was still figuring things out and had a had a tough day. But uh, we'll go back to this same article where uh, back in July, and the, the stream is also from the 27th. Uh, we went through this article on uh, the Mandalorian uh, that nominated for 15 Emmys. So um, I thought, well, okay, let's let's just go straight back down through this and and take a look at, at how well we did. So uh, as we go through here, uh, first right off the top, we uh, of the 15, there were eight that we uh, that 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 I thought had uh, either a, a good chance uh, or very likely or maybe uh, just just uh, likely. So good chance, likely, very likely. Uh, there were eight of them uh, and the, uh, Mandalorian won seven. So off the top, it looks like Santa did a good job. Seven of eight, not bad. Uh, oh, oh, hold the horses, hold the reindeer, not yet. Uh, Santa didn't do as well as I thought. Uh, there, there were five that I thought were very unlikely or unlikely. And of those five, Mando won three of them. Ho, 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 oh no. So of the seven, that only leaves four of the eight that I thought were uh, possible uh, to win. So only half of the ones I thought were likely to, to very likely. And uh, near uh, more than half of the ones I thought it didn't have a chance for. So it just shows what Santa knows about award shows. Uh, not a whole lot. <laughs> uh, so uh, let's take a look. Uh, the first one 
And and uh, just off the top, uh, Star Wars Resistance was nominated for uh, an outstanding children's program. It did not win that. Uh, actually, uh, Dark Crystal uh, on Netflix won that. The Jim Henson uh, Muppet uh, uh, remake or or reboot uh, that that movie or that series actually won the children's program. And uh, that's fantastic because Dark Crystal goes back to my childhood. I remember Dark Crystal and uh, it's great that one. Uh, I watched Dark Crystal on Netflix. I don't know if uh, many of you have. Uh, I know Mrs. Claus checked out after half of one. She's like, nope, uh, you're gonna watch this on your own, Santa. And so I, <laughs> I, I got kicked to uh, kicked to the curb. And so we, I watched that when uh, uh, when Mrs. Claus was at home. So that's uh, that's what won instead of uh, resistance, and that's great. That's great. Uh, uh, keep going, and we see uh, the, some of the other nominations here. We'll just go down. The very first one here, Outstanding Drama Series. Now this was the big the big one. This was uh, the the one that they waited to really late last night to uh, to to announce. And uh, the 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 series that actually won was Secession on uh, HBO. Uh, that series I'm not familiar with. Um, I don't uh, I've never heard of it, never watched it, and it was nominated uh, many times. Uh, so maybe secession will be something to take a look at i'm not sure uh but anyhow that was that's what won last night and so uh i had i had said that i thought it was unlikely and uh we had adam from fanjecture uh chiming in as well uh did not think that uh that mandalorian stood much of a chance in fact uh john campia talked about uh, the Mandalorian winning this, and it, it was, he, he all but said it was impossible, and uh, that, that's fine. It's great that it was nominated. It's one of those, uh, it's an honor to be amongst, right? So that it got nominated in the first place was great. Um, the, next, uh, the next one up is Outstanding Voice Over Performance. Uh, that was for Taika Waititi with IG-11. And um, with this one, uh, I had said that I thought it was unlikely, even though uh, Taika Waititi is popular. I thought it was up against some pretty tough uh, competition, and uh, it actually lost to Maya Rudolph. So uh, Taika Waititi uh, lost to Maya Rudolph in uh, as Connie the Hormone Monstrous on uh, Big Mouth. I do not know a thing about that. So I do know Maya Rudolph. M Maya Rudolph's uh, most po most popular uh, known for Saturday Night Live. So um, I I'm familiar with her, but uh, anyway, but that was the second one. The third in the list here uh, is Outstanding Guest Actor in a Drama Series. And uh, there's Dale. I uh, heard there were five nominations that won, told my neighbor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good they won two more. It, they won seven, so seven of fifteen. Not bad. Um, so the third one here, outstanding guest actor in a drama series. That was um, I. I thought that there was a good chance because uh, it was for Moff Gideon, and we had uh, 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 Giancarlo Esposito nominated. Thought with he, he's a, a, a respected actor, and uh, he did a fantastic job on a really good series, and I thought that the chances were good. But uh, he lost that one as well. Uh, that's the one that, uh, one that uh, I thought he had a chance. And uh, they lost to William Hill for This Is Us. Uh, this Is Us is a very popular series as well. Not one that Santa watches, but uh, This Is Us is very, very popular. And uh, anyhow, that's what, that's, uh, what won that award. Uh, as we keep going, uh, the next was outstanding production design for a narrative program, half hour. Um, and, and this, uh, we actually won. Oh, oh, oh uh, it was fantastic. So uh, this is actually, I said there was a good chance on this one, outstanding production design. And uh, it was up against some pretty heavy competition. I went through uh, last night and I looked at all of the uh, com uh, competition in each of these categories. Uh, it was up against Glow on Netflix. 
Uh, now, The Glow did not, it, it's not known for being a great show, but anyhow, uh, Glow, Space Force on Netflix, uh, What We Do in the Shadows. Now, What We Do in the Shadows was probably the toughest competition. That was a very popular series, uh, and uh, it, it beat that. And then Will and Grace on NBC. So, uh, Mandalorian won that category, and uh, that's fantastic. The next is Outstanding Cinematography for a Single Camera Series. And these uh, cinematography ones were the ones that we felt really good about. Uh, anything that had to do with uh, the special effects, the, sh the cameras, anything like that, we, we uh, generally said had a good chance or great chance. Uh, likewise here, um, this one we said there was a good chance and, w and it won. Uh, it won against Homecoming on Amazon Prime, Insecure on HBO, and The End of the Effing World and uh, on, on Netflix. So uh, that was great. Uh, it was, uh, uh, again, one that we, we won on that one. We got, we got it right. Oh, uh, Santa didn't have such a great track record, but uh, on this one, we got it right. The next is uh, uh, Outstanding Fantasy Sci-Fi Costumes. Uh, on the costumes, I, got, I thought, again, there was a good chance because uh, the, uh, the Mandalorian has a fantastic uh, look and feel. Feels like Star Wars. Looks like Star Wars. Uh, when, you're, when you're watching it, the, the, uh, and this is for costume design. I thought they did a great job all across the board in all categories, but uh, it lost to uh, Watchmen on HBO. Uh, so uh, it, we did think that it, Watchmen was probably just because of what we have going on in uh, society and the world today that uh, Watchmen was probably kind of preloaded, uh, set up perfectly to win uh, this season. So uh, it did lost uh, uh, to Watchmen. The next was uh, outstanding single camera picture editing. Again, this one uh, we we thought there was a very high probability, and uh, not only because of uh, the camera effects in the Mandalorian are fantastic, but it had three of the nominations. Oh, oh boy! In uh, this this category, uh, we had uh, for season two, uh, for chapter two, the child. Chapter 4, Sanctuary, and for Chapter 8, Redemption. So we had three of the nominations, uh, and sadly, uh, Mandalorian lost. So, oh, this was a tough one. This one I felt most confident about, or very, very confident about, uh, for the reasons we talked about. But it lost to Secession on HBO. So there's two that uh, lost to Secession. And uh, again, not a series that I'm familiar with on HBO, but I'll take a look at it uh, certainly after the Emmys. Uh, the next, then, uh, so that's that was three nominations there just for that one category. We move on to the next, and we get into uh, outstanding prosthetic makeup. And um, in this, I thought there was a good chance, uh, but didn't know what it was up against, and. Uh, when you look at the Mandalorian, you look at the prosthetics, you look at uh, Quill, for example, and you look at uh, some of the other uh, characters that were alien species, they felt good. They looked good. They looked really, really good. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, Mandalorian lost to Picard. Uh, to, so Star Trek Picard on CBS, CBS All Access or whatever. I think that's now going to be uh, rebranded. Uh, as a something plus, I think uh, I heard Paramount Plus. So uh, that's I think that's a good rebranding. But uh, anyhow, Park uh, Picard won the uh, prosthetic uh, for a limited series movie or special. So the next is outstanding music composition. Now music composition, uh, this is the one I've been was absolutely blown away with. I thought that uh, Ludwig. Uh, was an amazing composer. When I watched the Mandalorian uh, uh, docu series, it, it blew my mind, and we talked about that. Uh, and and for good for Ludwig, uh, he, they won. So we thought that uh, Mandalorian was very likely, and uh, it was up against The Crown on Netflix, Secession on HBO again, uh, Ozark on Netflix, which I'm not a fan of, and uh, Euphoria on HBO. So uh, good on Ludwig. Uh, I thought uh, he he deserved it. He the music in the Mandalorian 
is original. It's not John Williams, and it feels uh, like a space western, and it feels like Star Wars. Uh, he did a, a, an amazing job on uh, that to make it feel as part of the universe, and uh, very, very impressed. So that was uh, the number 11. The next is outstanding sound editing for a comedy or drama series half hour. Um, again, uh, here I thought it was unlikely because of what it might be up against. Um, and because uh, it was up against what we do in the shadows. Again, a very popular series. Space Force, Silicon Valley, and Glow. Uh, but but fantastic. This was one of the ones we got very wrong. I thought uh, it was very un unlikely but yet uh the mandalorian one oh good morning trinity uh second street marvel is here uh thanks yeah the, you know the the netflix or i mean the uh the youtube notifications have been letting me down too and now that adam uh over at fan gesture has decided to take his uh talents to uh twitch now, I, I don't know what that's going to do to me. Uh, so, uh, Adam set me in a in in a weird place because uh, I, I loved his show, uh, following mine, and it was part of my everyday normal uh, uh, routine. And now he's over on Twitch. I don't know where I'm going to get my notification for it. I don't know what time it is. Uh, uh, not happy with uh, Adam's decision. This is understand why he did it. I thought his announcement stream was good, but wow, um, that's, that's terrible. Um, <laughs> in my opinion, I just, uh, you know, not a, not a fan of that. So anyhow, that's, uh, so we, we uh, talked about the, uh, outstanding sound editing. I didn't think that, uh, that was likely here, but, but, but Hey, the Mandalorian one, number 13, outstanding sound mixing. Again, this one I felt for the same reason. It's for a comedy or drama series, half hour, and animation. And there's some great animation out there. And uh, I was I was afraid it wouldn't win. And so, uh, actually, we won. Mandalorian won. Uh, it was great. Uh, it was against Lost in Space 2 on Netflix, which I did enjoy. Lost in Space, is if you've not watched that on, on Netflix, uh, it's a really good series. And uh, season 2... Uh, they have the space whales from st I, that I'm absolutely sure they stole from Star Wars Rebels. And if you haven't watched uh, uh, those series, I hope that I haven't given away a spoiler by letting you know space whales are in there. But uh, watch, watch uh, uh, Lost in Space, the first and second seasons. Uh, it's really good, and uh, so it uh, so it was up against Lost in Space season two. Stranger Things on Netflix, uh, Watchmen, which we, get, again, uh, I thought Watchmen was going to pretty much win the night, and it did really, really well, uh, and then Westworld on HBO. So, uh, wonderful win there, and uh, just shows what a great crew uh, The Mandalorian has all up and down uh, the board. The last is uh, Outstanding Oh wait, nope. Number fourteen, outstanding visual effects. Now this is the one where we thought was very likely. Um, we we uh, we thought the the visual effects in The Mandalorian were amazing. Uh, that they were uh, well uh, uh, set up to win, and um, and and it did. Oh, and I, and I was actually reading from the wrong line there. Um, this is the, this is uh, the visual effects was against Lost in Space Two, Stranger Things, Watchmen, and Westworld. So that's what it was up against, and uh, we thought it was very likely to win anyway. The volume is um, a game changer in the industry. I think uh, we've talked about that uh, quite extensively. How. The, uh, going forward, that technology that was put together in the volume will only continue to get better and it's going to revolutionize how uh, uh, series are made. I think eventually it'll find its way into uh, big budget movies and we're going to see that impact uh, the budgets of these movies to, to bring them further down and get them in line with where they can get revenue from video on demand or uh, you know paid video on demand or streaming service, um, uh, so that's the the volume. I thought was just uh, was deserving 
the uh, putting that te technology together for visual effects was, it was an easy win and uh, it was up against some good competition as I mentioned the Space Wheels and Lost in Space 2 uh, was pretty good and then uh, lastly the very last category number 15 outstanding stunt coordination for a drama series limited series or movie uh, and so I was uh, really uh, concerned on this one I thought it was unlikely uh, it was up against uh, the rookie on ABC uh, the blacklist on NBC which uh, Santa and Mrs. Claus have been binging on Netflix oh we're we're uh, up into season six now. We just made it to season six. The Blacklist uh, found out we really enjoy that series. Uh, it was also against Stranger Things on Netflix and SWAT on CBS. So um, I thought it was unlikely. And uh, The Mandalorian actually won the category. So there's uh, the seven. And uh, as I mentioned, the track record wasn't great as far as uh, predictions went. We got some right. Uh, we got, we missed some big ones. Uh, but uh, in, in, at the end of the day, uh, that it was just for fun anyway. And uh, enjoyed uh, looking at them, going through it, and seeing you know maybe maybe what might happen. And uh, uh, it was wonderful to see that we won. You know, the Mandalorian won seven Emmys. That's going to be uh, a that's a big validation for what they're doing over in Lucasfilm. It's a big validation for what uh, Favreau and Filoni are doing, and uh, whether people want to acknowledge it or not, uh, it's also a win for Kathleen Kennedy. So, um, kudos to all the folks over at Lucasfilm and uh, Disney. They uh, we know the volume is now being used for some other um, uh, projects outside of Lucasfilm and I only expect that to that trend to continue and we'll see that kind of technology used uh, not only in uh, say Lucasfilm uh, we'll see it in Marvel which is where uh, we saw uh, that Marvel Studios is starting to use it for some of their live action and I think Disney will start picking it up as well and we'll see it across um, all of those franchises and we'll begin to see it used eventually I think uh, even in movies as they start to get into second gen, third gen, fourth, uh, fourth gen uh, revisions uh, and improvements as they get it even uh, tighter and if you're going to get to a point where uh, these virtual studios uh, like the volume are going to become so realistic and lifelike that uh, if again I you know I'm a big fan of Star Wars uh, Star Trek as well when I was uh, in the army it, it, that was a big thing uh, Star Trek Next Generation in the holodecks uh, the the volume is reminiscent of that where you're going to have uh, scenery projected uh, on the walls in the round as well as the uh, the ceiling. Uh, that make that immerse you completely in there. And when you when you saw some of the actors talk about acting in that space, how much better it was for them um, to respond to the volume than it is to green screens or blue screens. And uh, Santa uses a blue screen back here, but uh, we've got uh, blue screen and green screen technology. And for the actors. The volume was much easier to respond to that they felt like they were actually part of that environment is almost as good as being um, on scene uh, out uh, in some you know remote uh, location but you think about the budget and, and traveling uh, the production crews all around the world to produce uh, these shows they're all able to do it in in that one place with very few uh, scenes need to be done out on a set somewhere. So that's our review of uh, The Mandalorian and the Emmys. So uh, that, I thought that was exciting. Uh, and and uh, I see we, we still don't have, uh, it, it, we, we've got our regulars here. We've got Dale and uh, Reefer Man Reviews, Second Street Marvel. Uh, well, any thoughts? What do you guys think? Uh, I'm going to start to shift schedule. Uh, uh, topic here a little bit because there were some other things to talk about within Star Wars over the weekend and I uh, thought maybe I would uh, talk about a couple other things here 
uh, towards the end of the show. Uh, one of them being one of the criticisms I've had over uh, many of the uh, discussions I have with folks online about Star Wars is my knowledge of lore. Uh, and uh, I've been a Star Wars fan my entire life, uh, mostly with the movies, but as well with some of the uh, novelizations. Very few, but um, up until recently. Um, but I've been working really hard on picking up my knowledge of lore and uh, had a, a, a live stream um, a couple weeks ago now with uh, Lord Callus, which was great. We had some great visits uh, from that stream and Lord Callus uh, and I talked about lore and how uh, folks can start to expose themselves to Star Wars outside of just the um, the movies and what you're able to get on uh, now the streaming service with the, say the Mandalorian and um, I think that uh, one of the things that is uh, that I've really enjoyed is listening to the audiobooks uh, on Libby which is a public uh, library uh, audio streaming service and it's free you can get the the app for free you can get your library membership for free and you can rent those books for free and so I've I've done that with over 20 novels I think over 30 at this point and uh, listen to a lot of Star Wars content that way hey good morning pool of Zinda welcome glad to have you here this morning and uh, so I've been working on in, in increasing my knowledge of lore and uh, the other is I started reading uh, more of the comics and uh, going back and uh, buying some of those from uh, collectors, uh, looking for that content to, to bring in, and just so I can uh, have better conversations with people around the lore around Star Wars, not just uh, the, the movies. Fan texture, good morning, Adam. Uh, great to have you here. Thanks for, for joining. We, uh, we went through our uh, Emmy uh, predictions and outcomes. I will we'll, we'll uh, recap that here in just a moment. But uh, picking up on the lore of Star Wars to help increase that knowledge base has been something I've been actively working on. And I'm going to start producing some videos talking about some of that expanded universe uh, material that I've been consuming. And hopefully, then we'll uh, increase our 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 reach. And I heard somebody uh, peek into Santa's workshop here, uh, but we'll we'll check that out in a minute. So, um, so I'm going to start doing some content in that space. The other is, uh, yeah, uh, uh, Trinity. I saw that you've been reading the Darth Vader. I didn't know about bounty hunters, um, but that's that's great. And I I haven't got to that point yet where I'm reading more of the current stuff, but it's something I want to get to uh, soon. Uh, the other thing that I saw in uh, Goldman, uh, the Goldman has been working on uh, a, a um, Ray is not a Mary Sue video for over, uh, but, but probably been close to a month now. And he released that over the weekend, started watching it yesterday, picked up some more of it uh, this morning. And, and that's a, it's a pretty long YouTube video. It's uh, two and a half hours. Uh, so there's a big commitment to watch that. I've, I'm going to take it in chunks, uh, watch it bit by bit, work my way through it. But uh, it's one of the things I really enjoy. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so Adam, just real quick. So uh, let me bring back up. I I did a uh, just a text uh, document of my notes for the Emmys, and. <clears throat> I had I had uh, predicted uh, that the Mando would win eight or was likely in some some form of likely like likely very likely uh, high uh, or a good chance uh, of winning eight of the Emmys and we won seven so you would think that uh, seven of eight's a pretty good track record for Santa uh, but uh, at the end of the day it didn't break down very well because. Um, I thought that five of the Emmy nominations were very un or were unlikely, and uh, and in those five unlikely, uh, the Mandalorian won three of those. 
three of the five that I thought were unlikely. Oh, that's not great. And the one that I thought was a very high nominee, uh, very high chance, uh, because uh, the Mandalorian had three nominations just in the one category, uh, it, uh, it lost. So, uh, you know, it shows how much I know uh, on these award shows. I'm not a huge fan of the award shows, so uh, no surprise that I wouldn't uh, track with that. But I know you're uh, far much further into the industry that way, and uh, your your knowledge is much much higher. Uh, so. Um, I, I appreciate uh, your input here. So we let me see if I can just add this to the OBS here real quick. I'll show you guys my notes uh, so you can see sort of what I what I added. Uh, let's see, add uh, let's add a display capture and just uh, uh, Emmy notes and see if I can get it here. Ah, no. That's, I'm messing up. So anyway, not important. Not important. Uh, so that's uh, that's that's uh, this morning's news. We uh, certainly are excited that uh, season two of The Mandalorian is coming out in just a month. Uh, it's coming out just over a month, uh, the end of October. Uh, as, as we're getting closer, it actually worked out that if you watched a, a, a uh, an episode of The Mandalorian every Friday... Uh, starting three weeks ago, that you would watch episode eight the week before episode nine uh, comes out, which is, seems to be the case. Um, I saw where uh, the numbering is just going to continue. So uh, we'll go into episode nine of The Mandalorian, which is season two, episode one. But uh, from the story perspective, it's uh, it's the chapter nine of uh, the story so that's interesting we're going so if you'd started three weeks ago you would uh go straight from season one to season two uh uninterrupted and there's some rumor that maybe uh that's going to happen uh uh maybe as many as two or three episodes released on that very first week so we'll see i'm not sure uh i'm not sure i buy into that but but hey um certainly not going to be upset if we get more mando Oh, uh, so <clears throat> on that topic as well, I know I, I don't uh, uh, necessarily stream as news happens. Last week, there was a lot of talk about uh, how <clears throat> Pedro Pascal had had uh, some conflict and he had walked off set and so forth and so on. Uh, and that the second half of the season might look very different than the uh, first half. And um, that's, that's uh, I can't see three, maybe two. Adam, I'm not sure what your, your, your point, what your, what your comment has to do with, but, uh, but I know the stream's lagging behind where I am. So I just got to put that in context. So anyway, uh, the, the, the season, Pedro Pascal's uh, 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 rumored to have left and the second half of the season might look very different than the first half. And uh, my opinion on this is, not, first of all, not important. Oh, oh, my opinion's not important. But I'll, get, I'll let you know uh, what I think. Uh, I think that uh, Pedro uh, may have wanted to capitalize on how well The Mandalorian uh, is being received and that Disney and uh, Lucasfilm are going to use it as a cash cow. There's no question that uh, The Mandalorian is a cash cow now for uh, Lucasfilm. We were, as I mentioned earlier, we were at Walmart over the weekend. And every uh, turn in the store, we saw Mando merchandise. Uh, they've got uh, <laughs> they've got it everywhere. You can get you know bedroom stuff for your kid. You can get uh, cereal. You can get pretty much anything you can think of. They've got T-shirts with uh, the child on it. It's it's everywhere in the store. So I'm sure that Pedro wanted to reneg renegotiate his uh, contract for, for more money, but uh, read for me, and, or I mean, pulls into, I can't agree with you more. Um, look here, uh, a guy who more than 90% of his scenes are voice only. Uh, you're a voice actor. Uh, for this series, that's your, that's your role. You're a voice actor, and um, that's that's just uh, the state of things. 
and to what degree you can renegotiate your salary when you're just a voice actor. You can find other voice actors, my friends. Um, a lot of what we saw on screen was uh, John Wayne's grandson, uh, you know, the, the Duke. Uh, his grandson was in the in the suit most a good portion of the time, and the other portion of uh, the time was uh, done by a martial artist. And uh, uh, Pedro was in the suit uh, a minority of the time, and uh, of course it's his voice. But uh, even that is somewhat modulated through the mask. I don't think it would be hard to change voice actors. And um, I, from what I understand, it's very likely that you know contractually and everything else that that got worked out and pedro is part of season three uh shooting even as we speak which they're working on uh, i know they're already working on uh, mandalorian season three so that's that's what's going on there um oh two episodes yeah yeah <clears throat> right right uh adam i agree i i actually only look for them to release one uh, at a time and I think we're gonna see that happen uh, over over time and it, it extends the season out uh, now gets a right at Christmas uh, if we go that way and uh, one episode a week uh, makes sense to me that pacing makes sense to me and I think that's the, the way that's gonna go uh, Drew's reviews oh, 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 good morning thanks for joining good to see you here thanks oh you got a day off today wonderful uh yeah <laughs> pulls into right good Scottish jeans there in the Duke uh John Wayne and his his grandson there is uh is the Mandalorian a good portion of the time you see there's you can kind of tell the difference when you have John Wayne's uh, grandson in there right the, when he's a the Western gunslinger. That's John Wayne's grandson. When he's more of a hand-to-hand -hand combat, uh, that's going to be your martial artist uh, uh, actor. So that's that's typically what you're seeing when you're watching The Mandalorian, and uh, that's that's a pretty much how you can break down who's in the suit as you're watching, uh, which is great. Um, uh, what did Dale say? A little higher bandwidth for Twitch. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I'm, and I know, uh, I know, uh, Adam, you're taking some heat from Trinity on moving over to Twitch too, but I, uh, Twitch, I'm not sure how the notifications for your show are going to work. I desperately want to watch. I, I miss uh, your morning uh, coffee uh, uh, show, and uh, I don't know how I'm going to get those notifications or know when it is and how to get there. Uh, during the day when I keep, uh, I typically keep YouTube sort of running in the background as I'm writing code and uh, and, and working on my projects and uh, I'm going to have to figure out how to get uh, your show uh, from Twitch into my schedule and make sure that I don't miss it. And so that's that's uh, the really big thing. Um, yeah, Drew's reviews, I agree. You can see it in his uh, body language as well, but, it, but just real you know real easy for the casual viewer like if he's if he's more the gunslinger you got and it makes sense right so john wayne's grandson's a gunslinger john wayne was gunslinger right so um when he's in that role you pretty much know when it's hand-to-hand -hand combat you pretty much know and then the times in between i i, com I completely agree you can pretty uh, it's it's fairly easy to tell you can see that kind of just presence right so uh, John, I think John Wayne's grandson does uh, a bulk of the the acting. Uh, I think if you were to line up who is on screen most, I think it's uh, Wayne, and then uh, uh, I think it's the primarily the the uh, gunslinger, then the hand to hand, and then of course very very little of actually Pedro himself. So um, yeah. <laughs> Well, very good, Adam. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Yeah, I want to make sure we uh, we stay engaged uh, with your channel. Um, actually, uh, I love it. And so, um, and this this morning, this is where uh, Santa would love to have had a guest on his show. And I would have loved to get you on this morning here to talk about the Emmys 
uh, because uh, your knowledge in the Emmys is way better than mine, and uh, I would have enjoyed getting your take on this. So hopefully we'll catch up uh, soon, and we'll we'll kind of coordinate things better between the two of us. So folks, that's uh, what I want to talk about today. I've really uh, talk mostly about uh, the Mandalorian. We've talked about the Emmys. We talked about Pedro. Uh, we talked about season two coming up. And uh, it's an exciting time. So uh, I think that most of the news of, uh, of Pedro walking away and never coming back, I think that might be uh, an exaggeration. I do believe that there was some sort of uh, fracture there and that he, he tried to uh, you know, renegotiate for better uh, conditions. But I think uh, really that's, that's what we're looking at is uh, Pedro's likely on set for season three and we're going to see him um, continue in that role so uh, folks thanks so much i hope you've had a great weekend i hope your week is off to a good start um, that uh, you have a great week this week and i'll try to be back on as i as i mentioned i've been delving into the comics and i've almost finished my first run um, and i want to come back and talk about that uh, uh, here later this week so uh you guys have a great day uh it's great to see you all here this morning i hope uh you uh, uh take some time to spend with your family spend some time with people uh face to face uh, if possible i know we got to take the precautions with the uh, the whole pandemic thing but uh uh not going to go into too much there because the uh the mask is not not, not fun with the beard Let's put it that way. And uh, I tried to give blood last week. I'm a regular blood donor for the Red Cross. And uh, wearing the mask uh, put my blood pressure too high, and they couldn't take my blood. And uh, the lady doing the, the screening said she knew it was the mask causing the problem. I, uh, I've donated so much blood that I'm a regular giver. I've never even had close to a blood pressure issue before. No. Not a single time with the doctor or uh, the Red Cross, and yet uh, with that with that daggone mask on, I wasn't able to give. So uh, I hope that uh, we're, we're close to the other side of it. You guys have a great day. We'll talk to you soon. And until then, ho, 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 Merry Christmas, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.